I really had high hopes for this. <laughs> I really don't like it. <laughs> oh no. It's one of the few times I don't like something. Hello everyone and welcome back to Dollar Tree Dinners. My name is Rebecca and it is December, which means it is time to get started on some Christmas recipes. I thought today would be fun to explore some Christmas desserts. I don't make a whole lot of dessert content, so I'm excited to try some new sweet treats. I have four recipes to share today as usual, and I'm sorry if I sound a little subdued. I am getting over some kind of a cold or flu or something like that, and that's why this video is delayed because I had to take a few days off. And then we were also in Ohio for a little while. So we were in Ohio first, and then I came home and I was sick probably from being in Ohio, but I'm trying to feel better. And so I'm sorry if I sound a little more soft-spoken than usual. That is the reason I'm still a little under the weather, but the show must go on. So let's make some Dollar Tree Christmas desserts. So on the roster for today, we have a tiger stripe fudge. That's going to be the first one. That's a no bake recipe. And then the internet calls these slutty brownies. I want to come up with a different name for them because I don't really like that name. Just personal preference, but that's the second thing. And then the third recipe is called Christmas Crack. Again, <laughs> they have such funny names for some of these recipes, but technically I should go with the name that they already come with. So I apologize if you're not a fan of any of these names. I didn't come up with them. That's just what the internet calls them. And then the fourth is called whip cookies or sometimes referred to as cool whip cookies. Um, so all of these can be made with Dollar Tree ingredients and they're all really affordable. In fact, I was able to buy all of the ingredients to make all four of them for just around $22 or so. So they're all between five to $6 a piece. All right, so that's the plan. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The tiger stripe fudge is one that I made before last year and it was amazing and you only need technically three ingredients. I counted as four because it requires two jars of peanut butter, but then you also need chocolate frosting and vanilla frosting. You can also technically use cream cheese frosting, but when I've made it in the past, I've used vanilla. To make this fudge, you will need a baking dish. I'm using a 9 by 13 casserole dish. This is just to give it a shape, basically. And we are going to line this. Now, you can line it with parchment paper. I'm going to line it with cling wrap. I think I'm running low on parchment paper, and I do need it for a couple of recipes today. So that's the primary reason why today I'm going to use cling wrap instead. If you hear any ruckus going on in the background, that is just my dogs. They are currently deciding that it is a good time to wrestle. <laughs> so, all right, we can set that aside. So essentially the recipe for the fudge is just the peanut butter and the frosting, but I'm gonna be making two different flavors and then swirling them together. That's gonna to give us that tiger stripe effect. All we're gonna do is microwave these. So if you're gonna be microwaving the peanut butter straight in the jar, you're gonna to wanna to try to get off this entire seal off the top. Success with that. Let me go and open up all of these. These are gonna get microwave for one minute each. I'm gonna do a peanut butter first. There's our peanut butter. I'm gonna set that aside. And next I'm gonna microwave the vanilla frosting. Careful taking these out of the microwave because they're gonna be very hot and very loose. We can just go ahead and pour these both into a bowl together. Let's make sure we get all this goodness out of here. All right, now we're gonna mix those together. So this is gonna be our peanut butter layer of our fudge. And we're gonna set that aside. But we're gonna repeat the same process with the chocolate and the peanut butter. We're gonna pour both the chocolate fudge frosting and the melted peanut butter into a bowl. Scrape it all out. All right. Once we've got a nice solid mixture, I'm gonna check on the consistency of the peanut butter. So you want these to be pretty thin and pourable in order to get the swirls that you wanna get in your fudge. If at any point they get a little bit too thick, like this peanut butter layer has been sitting for a minute, it's a little bit too thick, you can stick this back in the microwave for like 30 to 45 seconds just to thin it out and make it pourable. So I'm gonna start by pouring some of the peanut butter kind of in a zigzag pattern across the bottom there. And we can do the same with the chocolate. If 
following kind of a similar motion. Repeat that over and over until you use up all of your fudge. Here's where you can really have some fun, get the kids involved, but literally all we're gonna do is take a knife or a spoon or something like that and start to just create some little swirls and circles in the top of the fudge to make a marbled effect. The more you work with it, the more delicate the swirls will get. If you want it more chunky, then swirl it less. If you want it more marbled, then swirl it more. Now all that's left is to let this set and you can set it in the fridge or in the freezer. If you're in a hurry, do the freezer. If you have time to wait, like let's say you're making this day in advance, you can do it in the fridge. In the fridge, it's gonna take about two hours, but in the freezer, it should only take like 30 minutes. We can start to unmold and cut our fudge, which is now firmly set. I had a little incident here. Something on my fridge fell into the fudge as I was putting it in the fridge, but again, it's fine. It'll be fine. That'll be our taste test piece, I'm sure. There we go. Now this is not a fudge, and I, I keep calling it fudge, it's not a true fudge, because a true fudge is nice and firm at room temperature. This really only stays firm if you keep it cold and in the fridge. We're gonna clean it up a little bit, and I do recommend keeping it in the fridge until you're ready to serve it. The process of making true fudge is a lot more delicate and technical than this. And that's why this isn't a fudge because fudge is technically a candy making process. But if it looks like fudge and it tastes like fudge, then that's really what's most important. So from here, I recommend about inch and a half to two inch squares because this stuff is quite sweet. So I'm gonna go ahead and just mark that out with my knife here. So 28 squares of fudge. Not fudge, but fudge. So again, this is a little softer, definitely needs to be kept in the fridge, but let me finish cutting this up. So there is our little tower of fudge, but as you can see, I think that that's the nicest way to present it is on a plate so that you can kind of alternate. It looks really full, people can just grab pieces as they want. Here's the back side of it, so you got a little bit more of that peanut butter and chocolate showing through. Let's give this a try. Again, keep this in the fridge until you're ready to serve it. It's softer than a traditional fudge, so it's not quite that dry and kind of airy texture that a normal fudge would be, but it is fantastic. It will definitely satisfy if you're craving fudge and you want something quick and easy. This is the one to go with. It's also incredibly rich. You really only need a couple bites to satisfy that sweet tooth. So a little bit of this will go a long way, especially at a holiday party. You could potentially even cut these even smaller into halves, because like I said, it's so rich, you really only need a little bit to get you through. Mm. The second easy dessert that we're gonna be making is one that I found online called Slutty Brownies. And like I said, I wish they had a different name. That's what everyone calls them. Floozy Brownies, maybe, I don't know. But it's essentially a brownie cookie stuffed with an Oreo. And you can come up with whatever name you want to come up with for that. So for this, we have some chocolate chip cookie dough mix. We have a fudge brownie mix and we have some Oreo cookies. My Oreos are Super Mario themed because that was all my Dollar Tree had in stock. But you can also use Reese's cups, Snickers bars, whatever you want. It's just something to put in between the cookie layer and the brownie layer. So the first step in making these is gonna be to make the cookie dough according to the package instructions. So our packet of chocolate chip cookie mix. I have some margarine. You can definitely use butter if you prefer, but Dollar Tree doesn't sell butter. They do, however, sell margarine. There is that. We can add that into our cookie mix, along with one tablespoon of water. All right, set that aside. And for a baking dish, I'm using a nine by nine baking dish. 
which I am gonna go in line with parchment paper just to be a little on the safe side. And then we can go in with our cookie dough. And we're gonna press this into a solid layer on the bottom, covering the whole bottom. Okay, which is actually quite difficult to do because of the parchment paper. <laughs> so, all right, next are Oreos. Where did those go? Those went over here. My little Super Mario themed Oreos here, but we are gonna layer those in. Perfect. All right, so we have a cookie layer, we have an Oreo layer, set that aside, and now we can work on the brownie layer. And also for this, we're just gonna be making it according to the box instructions. So this one calls for a quarter cup of water, a third cup of oil, and one egg. One quarter cup of water, oil, and an egg. Give that all a good mix to combine. I'm just gonna use the same spoon because it's all gonna be baked together. So it doesn't really matter. All right. So we've got our layer of the cookie dough and then the Oreos on top of that. And we are just gonna simply pour our brownie mix right over top of all that. Brownies and chocolate chip cookies go so well together. I'm sure many of you have had, I think they call it a brookie is a brownie cookie. All right, so we're gonna make sure all of those Oreo cookies are fully coated in the brownie. Make sure it's all the way spread around. This is quite thick, so it's gonna take a little while to bake. I'm gonna do 350. It's probably gonna take 40 to 45 minutes or so, but I'll let you know how long it takes to bake all the way through. Let's check on our brownies. These have been in the oven for about 40 minutes or so. We're gonna check and see how done they are. That looks pretty good. So 40 minutes pretty much on the dot. We're gonna take those out and let them cool. This has been cooling on the counter for a while. And I'm gonna cut this into, oof, that was a really crooked cut, <laughs> nine pieces. So again, I kind of map it out first and then I cut it. Just make sure I'm cutting nice and even slices. Let's get a cross cut here. We have the cookie layer, the Oreo, and the brownie layer. Focus on the right thing, there we go. And again, these are very sweet desserts. They're very rich desserts, so don't be afraid to cut them into smaller pieces, especially if you have more people to serve. I actually think I'm gonna end up cutting all of these in half again. These middle pieces are absolutely decadently fudgy. That's a much, I feel like that's a much better serving size, especially when you have a party and there's gonna be multiple appetizers and multiple desserts. That's another thing to keep in mind is that you don't necessarily need the biggest portions because this isn't all they're gonna be eating. And that is a perfectly filled out tray of brownies and I still have a couple of little end pieces left here. And these can be our taste test brownies too. These look so cute, especially the cross section because you have that brownie, you can see that Oreo cream filling in there and then the cookie. I just feel like these look adorable. Let's try our slutty brownies. I'm sure you've had a chocolate chip cookie and I'm sure you've had a brownie. You're combining those two elements together but then you're adding in the Oreo which adds a little bit of crisp to it because the Oreo doesn't get soft or soggy. It maintains its kind of crispy texture. If you wanted it to be a softer Oreo, you'd probably have to soak it in some milk or something before you put it in the brownie so that it softens up before you bake it. But otherwise it maintains that crispy pre-dunked Oreo texture. These are also fantastic. Definitely a 10 out of 10, perfect for a holiday party. And another thing I probably shouldn't keep in my fridge. <laughs> So far, so good. Let's go ahead and move on to the next recipe, which is Christmas crack, which is something that I have absolutely not made before. It's really only five ingredients. It is saltine crackers, margarine or butter, brown sugar, chocolate, and then optionally some salt or sea salt. The funny part about this recipe to me is that I can absolutely tell 
that it came from an ingredients household. There's this kind of social media thing about ingredients households and I grew up in an ingredients household. That means that I grew up snacking on things like saltine crackers and chocolate chips and what have you. So looking at this ingredients list and it being saltines and butter and brown sugar, chocolate chips, it, it definitely came from an ingredients household. But we're gonna make it for the first time and see if we like it. We're gonna start by lining our pan with some parchment paper because we're essentially gonna be making candy and we don't want this to stick. I feel like I have more parchment paper than I thought I did. An easy way to keep your parchment paper from rolling up like this is to crumple it up and then you can flatten it out. I don't know how much of that parchment paper you can hear crinkling. All right, we're gonna start with our saltine crackers. Let's try one of these, because I've never bought these from Dollar Tree before. They taste like normal saltines. They do taste a little bit more toasty, I wanna say, than other saltines. And we're gonna lay these out in a nice even layer on the bottom of our baking sheet. I've watched a few different recipes of making this. You don't have to use saltines. You can also use graham crackers or pretzels. I almost used pretzels, but then I found the saltines and I was like, okay, we'll stick with the original, try it as is. And then if later on down the road, that's always kind of my rule. I always try a recipe as it's written first, or as the original is written first. And then if I feel like I need to make some adjustments, Later on, I will. I'll try different variations of it, but I like to try it original first. I'll overlap them a little bit. I'm sure it'll be fine. We're gonna fill this up though. That's the first step. We're gonna set this aside. The second step is to make something of a caramel. So I'm gonna be using two sticks of the margarine. Of course you can use butter, but Dollar Tree doesn't sell butter. So I'm gonna see if this works with margarine. And to this, we're gonna add one very well-packed cup of brown sugar. And we're gonna let that kind of melt together to make a caramel. The thing is, is that there is a higher water content in margarine than there is in butter. So I might need to boil this for just a little bit longer to get it to the right consistency. And so that's where kind of understanding how food can be different comes into play because butter and margarine are not really quite the same. They're similar, but not the same, especially when it comes to baking and cooking. They can lead to a little bit of textural differences. Um, I had someone mention when I did my crumble cookies that her mom always made cookies with margarine and everybody always thought they were the best cookies. And that's because margarine has a higher water content. So it can lead to chewier cookies as opposed to butter, which has a higher fat content and it will make crispier cookies. So margarine isn't inherently bad just because it's unfamiliar to people or because it's not butter. Um, oftentimes it just depends on what kind of a consistency you're going for. That's almost there. I think another two to three more minutes and we'll be about right. I think that's looking pretty good. Without a candy thermometer, it's kind of hard to tell, but I think because we've got a pretty steady stream coming off of the spoon, it's slightly thickened. And remember, it will thicken up more as it cools. This mixture is extremely hot because it's candy, basically. Sugar gets hotter than water when it boils. Pour this mixture over our crackers. Trying to get as much of the surface coated as I can. And I'm gonna press them down gently into the caramel. Because then the next step is to put this in a 350 degree oven for seven to 10 minutes. This looks so cool in the oven watching the caramel kind of bubble around the little saltine crackers. But now we take it out of the oven after seven minutes carefully. You don't wanna zhuzh it around too much. And at this point, the caramel's kind of soaked into these crackers a bit. We got our bag of semi-sweet chocolate chips from Dollar Tree, which is pretty much exactly how much we need for this recipe. We're gonna sprinkle them all over the top. And 
And we're not gonna put this back in the oven. We're just gonna let it sit and let the heat from the caramel and the crackers melt the chocolate. I say let it sit, but really chocolate needs agitation and heat to melt. I feel like I need to let it sit a little while longer. I do wonder if I should have gotten two bags of these chocolate chips, but that's okay. Oh, that's perfect, okay, we're good now. So yeah, just let them sit a little while and they'll start to melt and then you can spread them out on your crackers. Trying not to move things around too much because you still want it to be a nice solid layer at the bottom here. Hopefully this works out. I think that the only kind of variable here is margarine instead of butter, but it seems to be working fine so far. Got a nice solid layer. I'm trying to make sure all of the crackers are really evenly coated in the chocolate. These kind of ones that I stacked on the edges here might not have been such a great idea because they're a little bit more challenging to work with because <laughs> they wanted to shift around. I'd say that looks pretty good. And then I'm gonna sprinkle the top of it with some coarse sea salt. Give us a little bit of sweet and a little salty. And then the final step for this is to set it in the fridge or the freezer to set for a couple of hours. We need to finish up our Christmas crack, which is essentially like a bark. So you're just supposed to break it up. It should just kind of break up on its own. You need to get it up out of this pan first. And as I might have suspected, I don't know if this one's going to work. I wonder if I should have cooked the caramel a little bit longer. It seems a little gummy. Let's check it out. Let's see if I can get this off the parchment. Sometimes things just don't work from Dollar Tree. Sometimes they do. Well, let's see if we can break this. Okay. Let's start from over here. So you're just kind of supposed to break it like almond bark. Yeah, it's a little, I feel like I should have cooked that caramel a lot longer since it was margarine based. Oh darn, it's not really crispy, crunchy like it's supposed to be, but it's, it's quite still tacky and gummy. So do I need to put it in the fridge a little bit longer? Do I need to stick it in the freezer? That's the question at hand right now. The other part of that is that I've never made this before, so I don't really quite know, but I think it's supposed to be like a toffee. Like it's supposed to be very crispy. So I'm gonna try to cut it with a knife. And then I'll stick this whole mess in the freezer just to see if that fixes the issue a bit. I don't have room in my freezer for anything like this, but I might have room in my freezer for a little serving tray like this. I don't think that this is right. So a couple of things, I probably could have, like I said, cooked the caramel a little bit longer, or I could have added more brown sugar potentially, since the margarine has a higher water content to make more of a candy. I feel like that might have worked a little bit better. Debating on whether to try this again. I'm sufficiently sticky now, but there's our tray of Christmas crack. Let's stick that in the freezer, maybe 20 minutes or so. There that is out of the freezer. I'll try to find a crispier piece if it still feels a little on the chewy side, which some of them do definitely seem. All right, I'm just gonna grab one. Let's see, let's see how this turned out or if I need to revamp it a little bit to make it more Dollar Tree friendly. This is gonna be one of the few times that you hear me say I don't like something. I don't know if it's the recipe. I don't know if it's because it was made with Dollar Tree ingredients. I don't know why I don't like it. It could be because of the saltine crackers and how I mentioned that they were kind of a little bit more toasty and that could be part of it. So they already have this kind of almost burnt flavor to them. I, I do get a toffee flavor, but then there's the chocolate and I don't know, I just, I really had high hopes for this. <laughs> I really don't like it. <laughs> oh no, it's one of the few times I don't like something. Maybe some of the saltines are just a little bit more toasty than others, because that bite wasn't bad. And I feel like I would maybe like it better with pretzels or like I mentioned before, graham crackers, but something about this just really isn't sitting right with me. 
and I can't really tell. It's hard to tell when you're making something new for the first time and when you're using Dollar Tree ingredients, like what the kind of culprit is as to why it's not very good. So in order for me to accurately determine, I would have to make it with regular ingredients from a regular store and compare and see if it's the recipe I don't like or the ingredients that I don't like. Next up, we're gonna make a vintage recipe. I'm pretty sure that this came from the 60s. I'll have to look into that. But this is called whip cookies, and essentially it is just cake mix, cool whip, and powdered sugar. No oil, no eggs. I feel like as far as a festive Christmas cookie, a lemon cake mix would probably be better, but my Dollar Tree doesn't sell lemon. They only sell strawberry, chocolate, and vanilla, so I went with strawberry. And of course you can use any flavor of cake mix that you prefer. Some extra recipes for me to add to my little collection, or maybe some recipes for me to try. They have a fluffy fruit pie and a mile high Mile High Fudge Brownie Pie. I'm gonna save those. Maybe we'll try them at some point. There's some conflicting information about whether to add an egg, so I'm gonna leave it out. And maybe if the cookies don't quite turn out, I'll test it with the egg and compare that. One of the things that I was realizing as I was looking over some recipes was that it would be super cute if you took the strawberry cake mix and you added some red food coloring to it, and then you also got a box of vanilla cake mix and you added green food coloring to it to make two batches of cookies, like kind of Christmas cookies. So yeah, if the no egg version doesn't turn out, I can always go back to the store, get a box of vanilla cake mix and some more Cool Whip and test it with the egg to compare and see if one is better than the other. And your Cool Whip needs to be thawed. Mine's still a little frozen in the center, but it should be fine. It'll thaw out as we mix it. Now from what I read online, this can take a little while to get this to come together into a dough, but we're just gonna keep working it. Now a lot of the recipes mention that this dough is quite sticky, but mine seems pretty dry so far. Like it's very hard to mix. I almost feel like I should use my hands to really get in there and mix it together. So this is, this is not really working. I mean, it is sticky. It's coming. It's just taking a lot longer than I expected it to. Let's try switching to something a little bit more sturdy like a wooden spoon. Try to get the rest of that mixed in. This is still very hard to mix. I definitely think it would be in your best interest to try to use a mixer if you can, especially if you don't have a whole lot of strength like me today, but we do have a dough. And now we need to procure a bowl of powdered sugar. I'm gonna go for about six cookies, I wanna say. So I'm gonna use my standard scoop here. Scoop that out into the powdered sugar. It's probably gonna make somewhere between six to eight. And then you roll it in the powdered sugar, making sure that it's fully coated. Set that over on a baking sheet and repeat that until I run out of cookies. That was a pretty messy process, but let me show you what we've got. I would say that they're pretty easy because they're only three ingredients, but I don't really consider them to be easy when you consider the amount of kind of labor it takes to make them, especially when it comes to mixing up that dough. But again, if you have a mixer, that would be a lot easier. But I made six large cookies. I don't know how these are gonna turn out, if they're gonna spread too much, but then I also made nine small cookies. That one kinda decided to wander off. Well coated in powdered sugar, hopefully that gives us a nice crackle effect. It says 12 minutes, but I have two different size of cookies, so I'm probably gonna do 12 minutes, and I think that the small cookies will be done in 12 minutes, but the other ones might take a couple minutes longer, maybe 14 minutes on the larger ones. All right, let's let those bake. It has been 12 minutes, so I'm gonna take out the small cookies, but I'm gonna give the big cookies an additional two minutes. Those look super cute. I'm already very excited. They're gonna flatten out as they cool a little bit. So let me set the timer for two more minutes, and then the large cookies should be done. I am very intrigued to try these Cool Whip cookies because I've actually been tagged in this kind of recipe for about a year now, and I've never tried them before. So I'm gonna pick one with a little less powdered sugar on it. Hopefully it won't be as sweet, so I don't have a sugar overload today. 
but I love strawberry cake. I love strawberry cookies. Let's give these a try. I can honestly and genuinely say that these have me kind of perplexed and stumped texturally because I'm trying to think about how to explain and describe these, but I've never really quite had anything like this, so I don't really know even how to describe them, but they're very chewy in a good way. Like they almost remind me of like bubble gum or chewy candy, like gummy candy. And I know that sounds weird because it's a cake and it's a cookie, but that's the closest thing that I can think of is like the texture of like hubba bubba or some other kind of bubble gum that really like chewy texture. I mean, it does taste like strawberry. It's very light. The strawberry cake mix by itself is a very light strawberry flavor. It's not overly sweet. I think that that's my favorite part about this is that the fudge is very sweet. The brownies are very sweet. This is not, this is very lightly sweet. And I really appreciate that. I'm not the type of person who tends to go for very, very sweet desserts. But if you want like bang for your buck, like you just want to take a bite of something and be have a satisfied sweet tooth, then the fudge or the brownies is definitely going to do that for you. Something like this, you could probably eat the whole cookie and not feel like you've had too much sugar. Those are very good and very unique. I would be curious to try it with vanilla cake mix because I think that the strawberry flavor isn't really that strong in these. And I really love vanilla. I've seen people make them with chocolate cake mix, but personally, I'm not much of a chocolate fan. Surprising that I made three different chocolate desserts today when I'm not really much of a chocolate fan, but I do like brownies <laughs> and I do like fudge. Well, that was a bit of a roller coaster and not really quite in the way I was expecting. I really expected to like all four recipes and I didn't and that's okay, you know? You win some, you lose some. Otherwise, you have three really great Dollar Tree desserts that you can make if you need to bring to a holiday party or a Christmas party this season. I would recommend any of those three, really simple and easy. I hope you guys are having a great day and I will see you again soon.